Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead. Welcome to another edition of Female here on BAOS. And right now, you can't really tell, but we are here in Melbourne, Australia, uh, at my mother's crib in the suburbs. Um, it is technically the middle of summer, but I'm rocking a beanie from Mr. Banks anyway. So uh, we came out here. We're actually leaving tomorrow. So we've been here about two weeks um, just to come back, just to get some sun, see some family. Brought Tiffany, of course, and my mother-in-law, which has been fantastic. Um, it's been a super dope trip. Um, we connected with a whole bunch of people in the beer scene out here. And uh, last time I was in Australia it was back in about 18 months ago, summer 2016, like North American summer. So winter here. Um, I got, I did a few interviews. Like you can check. Uh, I think it's episode 27 through 29. Came out really good. Um, but didn't really have time to research beforehand or do anything major. So over the last 18 months, I subscribed to a few mailing lists. One specifically has been amazing, the Crafty Pint. Huge shout out to James and Will. Um, and I've got so much information from them. Um, so I've been studying the game. I've been following a whole bunch of Aussie uh, beer accounts on Instagram and really paying attention to the scene. So as y'all know, if you follow BOS, y'all already know that haze is what we're about. And I really want to see what's up with the Aussie haze. And I had a, I was talking to a whole bunch of Australians who um, were really, like, uh, you know, they're excited about the, the beer that we get to drink. You know, we're lucky enough to get a bunch of stuff from across Canada and the States. Um, but they're always sending me the stuff that they get to drink. And, you know, they were sort of humble and talking it down or whatever. But I was like, no, it looks pretty good. And you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that uh, Australia is doing. So, um I've been really focused on that. So my we did two podcasts here. We did one with Chris at Mr. Banks, which is in the near the in an area called the Mornington Peninsula, in an area called Seaford. Um, super dope place. Um, and then we did another podcast with Mer Merrick at the Mill in Collingwood, close to the city. Uh, both of those were great. I got to go to a whole bunch of uh, brew pubs around the place: Bad Shepherd, Stomping Ground. Um, where else did we go? And well, excuse me. The other night I went to Carwin Cellars, a uh, place in Thornbury here. So sick, man! Like it's like all the places here, like uh, oh, a few bottlers, slow beer and beer mash as well. They're all like San Diego bottle craft. If anyone in the states knows what's up with their Canada, you won't have a clue what we're talking about because we don't have anything like that. But all these ones I went to in Melbourne, they're like a bottle shop where you can purchase cans and bottles and stuff to go. But you also have a full bar, including liquor and wine. Um, of pause of like fantastic all the freshest craft stuff that's uh, that's coming out and it's just such a cool experience so um, I've been really checking out a lot and I've had four different Northeast IPAs here so the one I'm about to talk about was the first one I had I can't believe it's not juice from the mill I had quiet deeds juice train and I had um, hop nation Jedi juice and um, all of them have got juice in the title um, but the very first one I had uh, was from Mr. Banks. Shout out to Chris for hooking me up with this beer. So I figured I wanted to do a nice beer mail video. You can check the podcast. I think it's episode 75. Um, and this is their exquisitely named uh, Northeast IPA called Wheeze the Juice. If any Encino Man fans are out there, y'all know what they're talking about. Super cool can art with the cartoon and the slurping machine and stuff. Basically, they're referring to it as an any IPA. And funnily enough, Chris said people here call it a Nipa. And he said he gets really mad about that. And I can see why, because it's annoying as fuck. Um... But this one was a super great beer. All of them, I'm not gonna lie, like I really enjoyed all of them. Like I was impressed that uh, the Aussies could make the style without ha a lot of them, or everyone I spoke to, hadn't um, really traveled to the United States or Canada and, and had much from the style. So let's see what this bad boy's saying. So this guy, he pours pretty cloudy. And this was, I think this is the latest batch. It was only canned a couple of weeks ago. Um, maybe yeah, about a couple weeks ago. Um, it's six point one percent juicy, cloudy, hazy Vermont any IPA. Call it what you want. We call it delicious. Very great stuff. Yeah. So, Mr. Banks, we the juice. Getting in ya. Great nose. Solid man. So. When I spoke to Merrick at uh, the mill, he didn't really understand what the chalky stuff was because he hadn't tried it, and his beer was quite chalky. So this gives me a little bit of the chalk, not uh, like a crap ton. Um, huge tropical nose, like 
I guess that's coming from the Vermont yeast and the suit, the hops. Oh, he told me what the hops were too. I don't know if it says it on here. It was the standard. Like, I mean, dudes out here are throwing galaxy around like it's nothing. So I'm assuming that was in there. A bunch of uh, super fruity tropical hops. Hella creamy, real creamy mouthfeel. Um, definitely no bitterness there. Um, it's super, as with everything in Australia, what I've noticed is um, the palettes are very light. Everything here is much more on the chill side. Um, in North America, we get punched in the face with flavor all the time. And that's something I've uh, have experienced a ton here. For whatever reason, I just feel like that maybe in the beer world, at least, like, you know, you have a bold Australian Shiraz, like, that's going to kick your ass. But in the beer world, it's still developing, and that's why I'm excited about it. I said it in all the podcasts that I think the Australian beer scene in a few years is going to be incredible. So we're really trying to, uh, you know, keep close tabs on it and get here as much as possible to, you know, really showcase what's going on. But, um, yeah, definitely doesn't drink 6-1. Super smooth. Um, slightly like herbal, that's the word, herbal notes in there. Um, and this is kind of like, I feel like it's almost getting better over, over time. Um, Chris was funny. He's a great bloke and he's super, I like, as most brewers are super like, um, hard on his own work, on his own beers. He was like, oh, no, I don't like this. This needs to change and blah, blah, blah. This he seemed pretty happy with. And I can see why, um, this, uh, was one of the beers I've been uh, hoping to get. I'd seen a bunch of stuff on Instagram for it, so I was super stoked to try it fresh on top of the brewery. They also did another one called Just Galaxy, which of course is what it sounds like, a Northeast IPA with Just Galaxy hops. Um, I tried it out of the fermenter. Um, it was supposed to be on tap at Carwin, but I think we just missed it. It'll probably hit this week, unfortunately. We leave tomorrow morning, as I said. Suitcases, they're ready to be packed once I've knocked this back. So, you know, I think that if this is an indication of... Um, Early days Northeast IPA for Australia or Melbourne. I would say probably Australia in general. I don't know how many more are popping around the rest of the country. Um, it's really good. I think it's really, like clearly all the Northeast IPAs I had here aren't quite at the level of North America, but no one's expecting them to be yet. And, the, you know, the, all the brewers I spoke to, particularly Chris and Merrick, were, were very aware of that. And we're just looking for feedback to make it better. I didn't really know what else to tell him because I'm not really that good. I'm not on some Noah at beerism level uh, feedback giving. But um, I think this is a real fantastic start. I think it's overall, it's a really, really good beer. The only way I can really describe what you can do to, for all these beers is just more balls. Just like, I don't know what the brewers over in North America are doing. I feel that, and that's my palate. And I think that might be too much for a lot of Australians. So I think it's got to progress slowly. So I would just, I think what they're doing is great. And if they can get over to the States or to Canada for a GABF or CBC, any of those North American festivals to really collaborate with brewers and talk to them and uh, see what's going on and get those profiles. And, you know, these guys are really smart. They're brewers, they're business owners. They know what they're doing and they can quite easily, I'm sure, you know, try a bunch of beers and um, figure out what they need to do to, to up the ante. And it has to go slowly because you'll scare people away. And, uh, you know, I think uh, it's just, it's really been an eye-opening trip and it's been super, super cool to see what what's happening out here. Um, really excited for what's to come in Australia. So, um, yeah, Mr. Banks, Wee's the Juice, fantastic beer. Make sure you get it in you if you can. I'm bringing a couple of these cans back for the homies. One for myself, of course. A couple for the for the boys back uh, for Gordon, for Scott and Brad. So, um, just have to get out here, mate. So, if you enjoyed the episode, check us a big fat Aussie thumbs up. Hit subscribe down below and make sure you hit that notification bell for when we drop these videos. Um, Hit us up on social media at BAOS Podcast. And of course, check out the long form audio. We've got a whole bunch of great stuff coming. Got a bit of an Aussie break. I'm not sure when this will drop. Probably soon, actually. Aussie's coming up soon. And then uh, back to the Ontario, Quebec, Vermont type of thing. That's it, y'all. Live and direct from Australia. Get it in ya. Yeah.